Okay, another quick exercise over here. Let's say we have another class called person collector. Basically, we're going to instantiate the programming pattern that we learned about in the review uh, part two, right? Having the array and also the auxiliary auxiliary integer counter. Let's say two person collectors are equal if they contain the equal lists of persons, but we're going to use primitive array to implement. Let me show to you the implementation quickly. So for the person collector, that should not be strange to you. So we got a person array. We got an integer counter for number of persons. We got the uh, constructor. We got the add person mutator. We can get the number of persons by returning the uh, counter value. And also we can get uh, the list of uh, the array of persons. So these should be uh, all familiar to you. So I'm not going to include the details. It will be up to you to actually put, uh, put in the details. Okay. But I believe the, the code I made available to you, they, they, uh, it should contain the complete implementation. But it's not difficult. You can just refer to them. Uh, just go over them by yourself. So now, how do we uh, overwrite or redefine the equals method in the person collector according to this informal definition? Right? If I got two person collector, collector one, collector two, each one of them should have an attributes for the persons, like for example, PC one that persons, and also PC two that persons. How do we overwrite our equals method in such a customized way so that you can compare the two arrays side by side? Right? So let's say position zero of PC1 the persons should be the same as uh, position zero at PC2 uh, the persons and etc for each position wise uh, comparison. Okay, think about it, how you would do it and then uh, pause the video and then come back when you actually sketch some solution either on Eclipse or maybe on paper. Okay, assuming that you thought about it, let's now take a look at the answer, one possible answer. So we got the equals method here that we're going to explicitly overwrite in this class. So we got uh, the standard two lines over here, and then we collapse uh, the two if statements into one, as we saw before. And then we're going to cast into person collector for the OBJ over here, so that we can invoke uh, the attributes on that particular class, right? So we have some Boolean equal here, and then I initially simply just false, okay? And then I'm going to say if this NOP is uh, equals other than NOP, meaning that they have the same size of the array of persons. In that case, we will bother to actually go further to actually to see if uh, they are uh, position wise equal on the person objects. You can see otherwise you can uh, you can see this if statement over here will only go into the body of the if when they contain equal equal sized array of persons. If they don't, the equal will remain to be false and then we're going to return false. Otherwise, uh, equal will be assigned to true over here and then we're going to run a loop to go over Given that they are, they have the same number of persons for each of the two internal arrays, we're just going to go a standard loop, go from zero until i strictly less than NOP, and we also put a value of equal over here just to say as soon as we find out any unequal person member in the current position, we're going to exit from the loop just to have a little bit more efficient code, basically. And then every time we simply say equal is reassigned to the following, this dot persons i dot equals other that person's i, you can see we are using the same index i over here. So that's why I said before, informally we're considering position-wise equal. We don't, we really, uh, that means the order of the person's objects stored in the person collector also matters, just to make things a little bit simpler for you. Okay, so that's about the uh, equals method. You can study that, but let me ask you some question quickly, and then we're going to trace the code uh, later uh, in some genuine test cases. But for now, you should really study this implementation here to make sure if I tweak maybe some lines in the code, you will be able to understand what the consequence is. Now, so that will be some uh, preparation for the next written test or maybe your ultimate exam. Okay, let me now go back here and let me uh, just show to you. We have our person class over here with its equals method, right? So now we got several versions of the equals method. Let's see the first one. So this is the equals method that's overridden in the person class. This is the first one, okay? And we got a second version here. So this is the equals method over here. Okay, let me just uh, box this way. That's the second version. Of course, it should include this line as well. So you can think about this is maybe version number one. Uh, you know what? I should call this version number two. Okay, version number two, and also version number three 
and we got another version and also version number one is the equals method from the object class the default version we got three version of the equals method oh, so this is a question at line number nine of person collectors equals method which version of the equals method is being called right that's also important for us to see let's go to line number nine line number nine is uh over here okay you can see line number nine is exactly this line over here and we are definitely calling the equals method over here equals method and which version of the equals method is being called so you got three options i uh, got four options either version one or version two or version three or some other version okay so you can pause the video and think about the answer all right assuming that you thought about it okay before i tell you the answer let's now be logical in order to figure out which version of the equals method should be called we should figure out the dynamic type for this uh context object over here right it's uh, always the way to uh to figure out so let's now say this is the context object for the equals method over here right so this will be the context objects and the question is what's its uh what's its dynamic type what kind of objects uh does it store at the runtime well at index i so we are indexing into an array so what's the type for person's array so we know this is really referring to the person col uh, collector class and then if you go to the person's attribute over here it's of type person's array right you can see that's a person's array and then if you go to a particular index for the person's array that's going to be person okay that's uh very easy to figure out person and so that means we are actually going to invoke the version of the equals method in the person class okay so the uh, the answer should be is going to be version number three uh sorry version number two so the answer is version number two because this dynamic type is simply person that's a the very important uh, step to really der uh, for deriving the answer all right so that's about the uh, answer but let's now also verify that very quickly on eclipse just for com uh clarity let me now go back to eclipse and then let me go back to package explorer and then person test person collector let me remove this breakpoint over here and what i want to do if you can scroll all the way to the bottom over here and if i can simply put line number 56 over here the last one we got pc1 dot equals pc2 pc1 is of type uh pc1 pc2 their dynamic type is simply just person collector right meaning that when i try to invoke the equals method is going if i step into it's going to be the equals method in the person collector which will be uh version three over here in turn it is going to invoke the equals method in version two and then in turn it's going to invoke the equals method in the string class let's see all of them right it's really important for you to see this programmatically let's now invoke the uh, debugger and then let's now switch to debug perspective and then let's see this okay so now let's see the first one if you move your cursor over pc1 is of dynamic type person collector over here so now if i say step into i'm now switching the context to equals method under person collector so far so good right and let me now say step over step over step over step over step over uh, i will walk through some uh tracing uh, uh in the next part a little bit later okay but now if i can just see this line over here right you can see this is invoking the equals method over here this line which we just analyzed this part over here this the persons that i uh this the persons at index i for example if i go to expressions over here if i say th uh this the persons at index i you can see this expression over here what's its dynamic type you can see this one here is if you expand it oh actually right, if you look, click on that it actually shows to you person over here so dynamic dynamically speaking is a person objects so that's why if if i say step into it's going to step into the equals method in the person class okay if i do that step into and now i'm in the equals method in the person class right and let's now continue 
So I want to say step over, step over, and step over up to here, right? So what I want to do is I want to step into to see which version of this equals method, right? This will be the third call for the equals method. We want to see which one, but we already solved this uh, question in, in the earlier exercise. It's going to be the string class. Let's just double check again. So rather than stepping over, you want to say step into because it's a single return statement. If you simply say step over, it's going to execute the entire thing. So let me say step uh, into, step into, step into. Okay, so now it's going to invoke this equals method on the first name, which is a string dynamically. So if I say step into again, so I will see the equals method over here on the string class, right? One more valuable observation. If you look at the call stack over here, you can see, I want you to look at the top four elements over here. You can see somehow we started with this execution from the test person collector and then we uh, invoke this particular test method, right? And from there, we actually invoke the equals method from the uh, person collector. That's why the next one will be person collector equals. And we also try to invoke the equals method from the person class. So that's why the next element on the stack will be person equals. And then we try to invoke the equals method on the string class. That's why you see string equals. So it's really important for you to see this chain of method calls specifically for the equals method. We are in, uh, invoking in total three versions of the equals method, person collector, person and string. Realistically, you might just invoke another much longer chain of the equals method. It's actually possible, right? Hopefully you can see that observation here. Okay, let me stop the debugger and go back to Java perspective. Okay, so that's about the uh, uh, equals method for the person collector. And the next one will be, I want to do one uh, entire uh, one, just complete walkthrough of one, uh, like a test case together with you about the uh, testing person versus person collector. Let's do that in the next video.